In electrostatics, we use the word charge in a different way to how we use this word in everyday language. In this lesson, we need to learn what scientists mean by the word charge. To be able to understand this, we need to know what an atom looks like. Remember that an atom has a nucleus and then lots of empty space and electrons moving around in this empty space. The nucleus has positive and neutral particles in it. The positive particles are called protons. The neutral particles are neutrons. The electrons, which move around the nucleus, are negatively charged. An object or an atom is neutral if it has just as many positive charges, just as many protons, as negative charges, electrons. But sometimes these neutral atoms lose electrons and then they become positively charged because now they have more protons than they have electrons because they've lost some electrons. Now those electrons can't go nowhere so they might be accepted by another neutral substance and now that substance becomes negatively charged because it has more negatives, more electrons than it has positives, than it has protons. Now even in science we use the word charge in different ways which can be confusing. So let's look at these different ways. Charge can be a noun, meaning an object, a particle. For example, a proton is a positive charge. An electron is a negative charge. A positive ion is also a positive charge. And a negative ion is a negative charge. Positive ions and negative ions are atoms which don't have the same number of protons as electrons. So a positive ion has fewer electrons because it's lost some. A negative ion has more electrons than protons because it gained some electrons. The word charge can also be an adjective. In other words, it describes what something is like, what an object is like. An object might be neutral, positive or negative. If it's neutral, then it has just as many protons in it as it has electrons. If it's positive, it has more protons than electrons. And if it's negative, then it has more electrons than protons. So we can say a ruler is neutral or it is positively charged or it is negative. That describes the ruler. It's an adjective. Objects aren't only neutral, positive or negative. They can be slightly positive or very positive. Obviously, there are many degrees of how positive they are, depending on the balance of positive and negative. So in a slightly positive object, there's only a little bit more positive than what there's negative. In a very positive object, there's a lot more positive than there is negative. And the same applies to a negative object. You can get slightly negative and very negative and obviously many things in between. Then the word charge can also be a verb, something that you do, an action. So you can charge an object. So let's say here we have two objects. One way to charge an object is to rub it against another object. Doesn't always work, but with some substances it does work. Now what happens when you rub two objects together is that you rub electrons off one of the objects onto the other object. So the one which holds its electrons looser loses electrons and the other one gains those electrons because electrons can't just disappear. Now the object which loses electrons has been charged positively. If it started being neutral and it lost electrons because of your rubbing, you have charged it positively. And the one which gains those electrons has been charged negatively. Here we have a glass rod and we rub it against a piece of cloth. Before we start rubbing, each of these objects is neutral. It has just as many positive charges as negative charges. Now, of course, we can't always go and draw all the atoms with the billions and trillions of positives and negatives inside. So we just simplify the diagram like this. So here we have the neutral cloth, the neutral glass rod, just as many positive charges as negative in each of them. We rub these together 
and as we do so electrons are rubbed off the glass rod onto the cloth because glass does not hold electrons as tightly as this cloth does and so those electrons are loose and free to be rubbed off onto the cloth so there we can see the electrons that have moved from the glass rod onto the cloth as a result the glass rod now has fewer electrons than it has protons it has fewer negatives than it has positives so it has been charged positively it now has a positive charge meanwhile the cloth it now has extra electrons which aren't neutralized by protons that are there because they've just come in without any associated protons so it's got extra negatives compared to positives the cloth is negatively charged